you're back here with Barry and uh, listen watch this quick video I'm sure a lot of you have already seen it but it's a quick few minute video about a journalist out of California that spoke his mind and every fact he said was crystal clear and watch watch on the deaf ears it falls on it's almost as if behind the mask they're smiling and kind of saying, yeah, right, good waste of time. So here he is, and he puts it uh, with his uh, waiting for two hours for his two minutes to speak. I think it's an excellent presentation of common sense, and it should really resonate with the people that are tuned in to what's really behind what's going on here. It sure should resonate how this is going to be a very difficult situation and why I say beware but truth doesn't matter as much as the perception of truth okay watch an excellent few minute presentation out here on the old balcony with Barry and we'll pick this up on the other side thank you uh, next up is John Ziegler and then Deborah Baber will be in after After waiting for two hours and now getting two minutes, I'll get right to the point. Uh, this board is pretending that for the last three months, your emperor, Dr. Levin, has not been against a mask declaration. Now, all of a sudden, we're pretending that masks are everything, even forcing speakers to use masks. I would like the board to take a position. Was Dr. Levin wrong for those three months? And if he was this wrong, why has he not been removed? Why has he not been fired for being so catastrophically wrong? Or do you not really believe he was wrong? You're just wearing these masks because it is a signal of your great virtue. Damn! Damn! Damn. Because for the last three months, we have not worn them. And Ventura County has done outstandingly well and continues to do outstandingly well because we are not Los Angeles. We are not New York City. We never were going to be any of those things. Ironically, this is one of the few things Dr. Levin was actually right about. He has been wrong about everything. He is the one who told us we would have four to 600 hospitalizations a day. He, he, he revised that to two to 400 a day. We still haven't reached that in one day. We're barely over 200 for the entire ordeal that you guys have put us through. We now are panicked over 51 total hospitalizations in a county with eight hospitals. Can you people do math? Can you please do basic math and understand where we are on this? This is not a crisis. You, however, have created one. You, in an effort to try to prevent all death, when we've had 43 deaths, have now ended all relevant life. And you should all be ashamed of yourselves. And this will never be forgotten, ever be forgotten. You will all be held accountable eventually in this life or the next. You all better hope there is no hell because when you die, that's where you're going. And guess what? You're not going to be dying of COVID either. Thank you. Well, welcome back. Um, certainly you can pretty much sympathize on how that uh, person felt and it fell on deaf ears. You can tell they, their, their answers are just plain with no supporting evidence whatsoever. This is obviously an orchestrated uh, attack. Uh, I want to really get you to look at something here. Have you ever really thought about it, about since the conception of humanity? Um, again, I keep referring back to the age of the Sumerian culture, which would roughly be about 6,000 years ago. The history of all civilization is very much a history of various levels of enslavement. When consciousness was higher and more peaceful eras during humanities would prevail, then naturally there would be less of a, an iron fist over humanity's freedoms. There would be less dis-ease, okay, disease, because everything is functioning normally. Okay, there's no stress, there's no friction, the parts are lubricated. And uh, I'm quoting here, if I pronounce him properly, it's uh, Etienne de la Botte. And it's, he said, and I, I couldn't agree more, I want to quote it word for word. If one day enough people refused to obey and stopped surrendering their wealth and property, their oppressors would become naked and unarmed as a nothing. Just as when the root receives no nourishment, the branch withers and dies. And 
My gosh, if there's anything that we've been preaching since we got to meet so many of you people via internet, it would be pretty much that. <sighs> so much of this, we're, we're doing this on a voluntary basis. This is voluntary ser servitude. I, I, I don't... This servitude is definitely being done on a voluntary basis because it's being done through our own ignorance because people are lazy and they will not research. I, d I don't know how clear I can make it. I want to continue with one or two other little notes I made during the video. Obviously, there's no need of fighting to overcome this single tyrant for he is automatically defeated if the country refuses consent to its enslavement. Okay, this is being quoted from the very same person. You've got to admire that type of wisdom. This is all I'm saying is, if we band together, how many times have I said that? Put the religion aside, the color, the sex preference, put it all aside because they're all means of divide. We've repeated this a thousand times and so has a bunch of other good websites that are trying to get people to see the truth to the betterment of all of humanity. Uh, we basically, if you want to look at it, as hard as this is going to be to take, we consent to our own slavery. And there's really no other way to put it. And I, I never take sides. Not once have you heard me in all the videos that we have been through together. Not once as I have I ever, or the mentors, have ever judged anybody? No, because it's the opposite. Then we're playing right into their game, no matter what the subject is. If a judgment comes out, a divide must follow. They know that. I wish more of our people knew that. Okay, because we're committing to our own enslavement. Okay, the lower the frequency, the higher the hand over you. The higher the frequency, the less of a hand over you. Keep that in the back of your mind as we go forward. In closing, over time, and as we're witnessing now, the very love of liberty and freedom no longer feels natural to most people. And if that's not a scary thought, I really don't know. What will, what will it take to, to awaken? I really don't at this point. Anyway, it's old Barry, and we're making the best of it. Like I say, our life has not changed all that much uh, around the countryside. We don't have desires to go to big cities and all that anyway. And really, it's, it's just been besides uh, uh, basically the lockdowns lifted. Uh, they'll be opening up all restaurants within a week or so. Air travel starts real soon again. It's not going back to normal. I'm just trying to say that, you know, um, the adjustments we've learned without a question were far, far subtle, more subtle in the countryside of these kind of countries than many parts of some of the nations of the West and Europe and China and Australia, certainly Australia, have been experiencing. Anyway, it's just our perspective. Hope it helps and love being with you guys out on the porch and soon enough we'll be back on the road again doing tours together. We'll talk to you soon. It's old Barry. Bye.